TensorFlow Kira's versus PyTorch. You hear a lot about this. Believe me, as somebody who has a course in TensorFlow Kira's, I often get a lot of questions as far as when are you switching over to PyTorch? And I really do like PyTorch. And I will definitely say that PyTorch does have some definite advantages over TensorFlow Kira's. And in this video, I want to talk about what I would call three nails in the coffin of TensorFlow Kira's. Now, by no means does this mean that I am throwing in the towel on TensorFlow and Kira's. No relationship is perfect. I These are the three things that I dislike the most about TensorFlow and Kira's when I have to teach this course. And I will also say there's major sort of cool kid sort of factor to, uh, to PyTorch. You're not going to ask a project that is currently using PyTorch, hey, when are you moving over to Kira's? versus the, the opposite. And I took a survey of my YouTube community, and here's where we're currently at. So by no means is TensorFlow Kira seeming to be dead at this point. But there okay, is let's get into nail number momentum one. Momentum currently behind PyTorch. Oh, and before we get into the nails, let's look at the upcoming GTC 2021 conference. I am really excited about this, and this goes right into what we're talking about. But look at this in terms of Kira's and TensorFlow versus versus uh, PyTorch. You've got you've got Francois Chollier, who is pretty much the guy that created Kira's. Now it's maintained by a lot of other people. He works for Google and is really the force behind TensorFlow and Keras. Keras in particular. I've used many of his examples and very, very brilliant guy. In the other corner, and I don't think it's necessarily being portrayed that way, but you do have... So you've, you've got the Kira's guy giving the, the next five years view for Kira's and TensorFlow, and you have Someth Chantala, I hope I'm saying that name halfway correctly, both of them too. This is a researcher at Facebook who is one of the, I believe, original two behind PyTorch. So this is worth the price of admission right now, which by the way is free. Sign up for GTC 2021, you won't regret it. I just wanna hear both of these two give their vision of the future. And this will have a lot to do with what I'll think of PyTorch versus Kara, certainly myself. Even if they don't directly address each other, they're separate, they're separate presentations. And I will be doing a video after I watch both of these two presentations and let you know what I think of the future of PyTorch and TensorFlow. So definitely check out GTC 2021 and let's talk about that first nail. And that is installation. Now I shouldn't complain too much. I have gotten tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of YouTube views from my helpful video showing how to install TensorFlow and Keras. And it's a pain. That's why people watch my videos, because it's a, it's a complex process, and I show how to do this, especially when you throw a GPU into the mix. Let's look at the installation processes for both of these. So this is TensorFlow's page, and for GPU support, uh, you have to deal with PIP, the PIP package, which, which is usually kept up to date. When I do videos on how to install this, the easiest way is to use Conda, but this gets into another nail, but it's just not kept up to date on TensorFlow. And you do the, uh, you can do the PIP install, and they've already got an old version of TensorFlow reference there. I don't know where they're going with that. It's quite complex. There is a lot going on here. You can make this all work. You get Conda installed, you get uh, QDNN, importantly set those paths. Lots of people mess that up in my comments section on my video showing how to do this. You can do this completely with Conda, but you're going to be a version or two or three or four sometimes behind, depending on how quickly the, the Google engineers have tried to keep this keep this up. And if you search on install TensorFlow with latest 
latest version, uh, it's it's always you can't use the nice easy conda install that you normally would. This is how you install it on PyTorch. And what amazes me is this is PyTorch.org. This is the front page to the whole thing. This is not buried off in documentation somewhere. They literally give you this thing right here. They tell you Okay, do you want the stable version or not? You get to pick. Rather than the stuff being dictated to you, they give you some options. So I would probably want the stable version. Uh, you can do Windows, heaven help you, or you can do Linux or Mac. And I say heaven help you, but they really do make this pretty easy on Windows. Whereas on on, Py, on TensorFlow Keras, you, you can get it to work on Windows. And like I said, I've gotten tons of views showing people how to get it to work. Then you can choose. Do you want to do Conda? Do you want to do PIP? Do you want to do uh, LibTorch or Source? And the Conda versions, PyTorch, they actually keep those up to date. And that is really nice. And that is not how Google currently rolls on TensorFlow. So you've, you've kind of left your own. Do you want to use Python or do you want to use C++ Java? Mostly not doing that anymore. So, but this is really nice. Compute platform in terms of do you want to do Conda 10 or do you want to do, do you want to do CUDA 10 or do you want to do CUDA 11? This is part of the Rubik's Cube that is TensorFlow installs. You need to find out which version of CUDA goes along with the version of TensorFlow that you're installing. And if those don't line up, you're going to get this weird DLL error and then you're you're dead. And then they give you the, uh, the command basically to run it. And they're already supporting Python 3.9, uh, TensorFlow always keeps a couple of versions behind that. So you put in all of these and they basically give you the command. Conda install PyTorch, Torch Vision, uh, Torch Audio, CUDA Toolkit for whatever you chose. Now I would have chosen 11 because I like the newest. Also I'm running Ampere GPU which works a lot better on, on 11. So this is the installation process, night and day in terms of complexity. All right, let's talk about nail number two. And nail number two is support of reinforcement learning. And this gets into a lot of third party libraries as well, which I'll talk about. But reinforcement learning is just not supported that well in, in TensorFlow. Obviously you can build it from scratch, but if you're wanting to use out of the box libraries, for example, I used stable baselines for the longest time in my course, but they abandoned TensorFlow and they went to PyTorch. And by the way, a continuation very much of this of this nail is lots of third party libraries frameworks are moving similar directions. So one problem that NVIDIA StyleGAN 2 ADA had is that they, they supported a very old version of TensorFlow, one of the 1X versions. So running StyleGAN 2 ADA up until just a few months ago on current TensorFlow was very, very difficult. StyleGAN 2 ADA did what stable baselines did, which did what a lot of them did. Rather than upgrading from the very complex transition from TensorFlow 1.0 to 2.0, they just chucked it and went with PyTorch. So this is another area. My course does cover StyleGAN 2 ADA. And believe me, that is, that is what you want to be doing for these very advanced image-based GANs. And let's get into nail. Three. So nail three is just how up to date, how stable are the are these two? PyTorch does seem to be pretty stable in terms of not introducing a lot of breaking changes that causes people to have to refactor their code. If you look for an example on TensorFlow, especially into the old 1x stuff, I mean TensorFlow kind of pulled the same thing that you had with Python, where they they did an upgrade and just breaking changes all over the place. So you end up fracturing your support base into two. And then, I mean, Struts did a similar thing on the website. So if when you do an upgrade, if you fracture into two halves and it's it's just as difficult to just go to PyTorch it is, as it is to upgrade to the latest version, you tend to lose people at each at each interval. So if you look at trying to install the latest version, how do I install the most recent TensorFlow here, 2.2, on Windows when Conda does not yet support it? This is, I think they do have 2.2 on 
kind of now, but we you always go through the same sort of thing. And Mac is way obsolete, but Mac also doesn't have proper GPUs, so that doesn't matter as much. Google just doesn't seem to feel this is really that much their job to keep the Conda packages in, up to date. You'll have people go to Google and post issues saying how badly out of date they are, and they're like, oh, that's, that's, uh, that's for Anaconda to do. Whereas in PyTorch, more it's the PyTorch crowd that keeps that up to date. So it, it becomes very difficult to support the latest, the latest, latest versions. Now, those are the three things that I, that I dislike the most about the current state of TensorFlow Keras. If I had to list three things for, for PyTorch that I disliked, I would say one is for an introductory course like mine, you're going to have more code on PyTorch. You've got to get more into the nitty gritty of what's going on. It's just going, I mean, in, instead of just doing model.fit, you're going to have to literally specify what's going on there with the forward, with the backward, all that kind of thing. That would be, that would be number one. Although if you're doing lower level stuff, that's actually a comfort to have that low level access. So if you're staying on the well-trodden path, I still do believe that Keras is the easier of the two to deal with. If you're going experimental, PyTorch definitely seems to be easier. Number two would maybe be GPU support is you have to bake it into your code generally. So you're, if you write code to be GPU compatible, you're going to need code changes to make that code work on the non-GPU running of, of PyTorch. Now, you can write code that way too in TensorFlow if you're directly dealing with the GPU, but this is pretty much the path that they force you down. Although if you're doing modern deep learning, why would you be doing that on a CPU anyway? But sometimes it, it, is, it is useful to have your examples work on CPU as well. And I can't think of a third one, honestly, off, off the top of my head. But this, is, this video is more about things that, that I wish were better in TensorFlow. Now, like I showed you in the chart of my pulling my community, you always need two opposing sides. You need two superpowers or multiple superpowers. If you're talking about countries, you need more than one political party. Although I wish there was more than just a binary choice there. You need opposing sides. Otherwise, you don't get the nice competition that keeps the arms race going. And in this case, this is, this is a good arms race that... You have TensorFlow and you have Kira's. You have PyTorch challenging Kira's. And certainly if Google gives up because it's not fun anymore, uh, which Google has a tendency of doing, look at Google Code versus GitHub. Once they decide something's not fun, they tend to drop off the radar. Somebody else will rise to challenge. That is the very awesome nature of deep learning research and software computing in general. So what do you think uh, of these two? What's your impressions? Let me know in the comments. Uh, give me a like if you enjoyed this video and subscribe to my channel. I do things in both TensorFlow and PyTorch, sometimes even in both, because it's often just a translating of my code between one and the other. The course is currently still face based primarily in TensorFlow Keras, but who knows? Well, I evaluate that one on a on a year to year basis. Thank you for watching this video and please subscribe to the channel.